Westing, and welcome back to another episode of 2020-2021 Maine. I'm your host, Fiona Delari. Later in the show, we'll dive into Matias' thoughts on the president-elect. We'll discuss IHSA basketball rules. We'll talk books and coffee over break. And we'll make sure you don't forget a special concert tonight. But first, the Illinois Art Edu Education Association recognized the Tia Valley as 2020 School of Distinction. Jalen King has more. Even throughout this pandemic, the concepts and creation of art have still been in creative use. Let's congratulate Matia Valley's art department for being one of the only eight schools to be awarded the Schools of Distinction Award within the Illinois Art Education Association. This award recognizes excellence in the areas of curriculum instruction, authentic learning, showcasing student learning, connecting to communities, professional development, as well as leadership and advocacy. Over the summer, Matisse students really showed off their creativity, hard work, and their emotions behind their artwork, especially going through the experiences of COVID-19. After receiving the nomination, the department worked together to submit artifacts that represented our work and student outcome in these areas. One of the things we highlighted was the various ways we showcase student learning through local, regional, and even national shows. We showed how we integrate contemporary artists, 21st century skills, student choice, social emotional learning, and cross-curricular learning into our programming. Seeing all this work of art further proves how hard the art department worked to achieve this award. Matilda Valley Art Department is truly honored to receive this School of Distinction Award. This would not be possible without the dedication of our student artists, as well as the support of the administration at the building as well as district level. Our art staff celebrates this honor with our students who continue to surprise us daily. Please visit mvhsart.org to see more about our program and view student art. For the Maine, this is Jalen Kink. Jalen, now we go to Josh with the student body's opinion on the outcome of the presidential election. On November 7th, Joe Biden became the president-elect of the United States. So I sat down with several members from MV Citizens, a new group here at Matia that encourages students to get involved with political and social activism to find out more about what Joe Biden's presidency will mean for America. Um, so with the Biden-Harris administration, it's not going to really mean any sweeping social change, but definitely somewhat of a change in the current climate that we live in. I think the biggest change is that it won't be so polarized. I think in today's environment, people are so quick to call out the other the other side. I think with Joe Biden coming back into, uh, into that presidential office, he won't make it about Republicans or Democrats anymore. It'll, it'll hopefully just be about being an American. You know, caring for the American people and uniting them as one and not just supporting his followers, but um, uniting all the people in America together. So I think the global climate crisis and the pandemic crisis and the response of Trump and is what is what mainly brought people to end up voting for Biden. And that is why he won the popular vote. You know, it's no longer about which party you support or, you know, what issues you, you believe strongly about. It's about, um, can we come together and move forward? It'd be harder for Joe Biden to maybe pass some more kind of liberal or progressive legislation through Congress if it retains that Republican majority. It's really the willingness of Joe Biden to uh, take that affirmative action and push forward an agenda, a strong agenda. Um, if he does, then we can see some uh, good improvements to our lives, um, probably a raise in the minimum wage, um, expansion of uh, health care, um, and other, uh, other policies that he's proposed. And so I hope in the future Biden can help this country and heal the people from this pandemic, fix global affairs, and unite the American people as a whole. We're wondering how will he handle it and how will he kind of keep the promise to the voters that put him in that office. And it's going to be a very interesting four years. COVID has really complicated high school sports. Jackson Corbett and Robert Stewart have more on IHSA's regulations regarding basketball. Are you tired of taking walks or enjoying your favorite sandwich with a mask on your chin? Never fear, the mask lanyard is here. It's 
so comfortable and I never lose my mask. I love my mask lanyard because it's easy to take off and on. Scroll through Amazon's endless colors and options. Buy your effective and affordable mask lanyard today. For the main, this is Zara Selim. Yum. Now here's Drusha Musham with an interesting take on staying home during the pandemic. We are homo sapiens. Hence, we have an inherent tendency to be social creatures. Recently, a mammal, scientifically named the Chiropatra and commonly called a bat, were eaten by an exotic human with exotic taste buds. What started as a simple outbreak has somehow caused me to be sitting at home on a Wednesday afternoon eating my first, no second, eh, third, fine, fourth meal of the day. By 2020, I thought that aliens would be taking over the earth, but who would have expected that severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 would be doing so instead? Most of us had to say bye-bye to standardized testing, three-hour-long AP tests, finals, graduation, prom, along with grooming services, restaurants, entertainment menus, and shopping, while saying hello to masks, sanitizers, social distancing, a crashing economy, loneliness, Zoom calls with people you would never associate with, and surprisingly, toilet paper shortages. However, it is our job as a society to bear enough social responsibility to follow the recommended CDC guidelines. If we all work together, we can curb this pandemic and go back to our normal ways. We both know that it's hard to maintain social distancing and mental sanity for such a long period of time. So what do I do to stay sane and productive during quarantine, you ask? Well, I do a lot of things. Want to join the main? Ask your counselor how you can join media and communications next year. Is the peppermint mocha really worth the hype? Let's find out. Hi guys, this is Roshini and my friend Amna. Today we're going to be showing you how to make a peppermint mocha at home so that you can try it over the holidays. Just in time for the season. For the first step, add your milk, sugar, and cocoa powder into a pot on medium heat until it begins to boil. While it's still boiling, you're going to add coffee, peppermint extract, and vanilla extract. So we have our peppermint mochas ready, and we're going to try them now. Cheers! Cheers! Oh, that actually tastes it's really good. good. That's it's really, good. really good. Okay, so... I added like extra mint, but it tastes yeah. really good if you have it strong. So yeah. if you like it strong, add more. I think, yeah, it's just a little bit strong, but otherwise it's really good. I did not expect it to taste like this, but... Yeah, it tastes really good. Oh my god. Yeah, I would, I would give, give it a 10 like, out of 10. What would you say? I would give it a 10 out of 10. Okay, I would give it like an 8. Just because... Why? Like, but maybe that's because I made it too strong, but I really like it. It's actually really good. Yeah, this really tastes like Starbucks. I don't know if I can call it like Starbucks drink, but I mean, yeah. it's really close to it. So yeah. if you really want to try this at home, I would suggest it. Yeah, and it's really easy to make too. So we hope you enjoy it. Yep. So that's all we have for you guys today. I hope you guys liked it. For the main, this is Roshini Ashra and Amna Faruqi. Thanks, Roshini and Amna. How about while you're drinking coffee, you're reading a good book as well? Anna Oppression has more. We've been in quarantine for almost eight months now, and we don't know quite when it's going to end. I think I speak for everyone when I say we've all watched a lot of TV these past couple of months, and as fun as it is to binge your favorite show 30 times, you might be looking for something new to do with your days, especially as it gets colder and your options on what to do get pretty limited. You might even find yourself looking for a good book to read, and sometimes all it takes is one good book to get you started on a reading journey. That one book that I can recommend to you is All the Bright Places by Jennifer Neven. 
It's categorized as a young adult romance novel, but it is just so much more than that. It shows the highs and lows of living with a mental illness without glorifying or stigmatizing it. Now, it even has a movie adaptation, so if you're not a big book person, you should definitely give it a watch and maybe even shed a few tears. For some opinions on this book, we turn to Sonia Desai, one of its biggest fans. It was just a really good um, insight to me about the struggles of mental health and how it affects people, and I think it's just amazingly written. So I would totally recommend it. You might have learned about a new book today, and who knows, maybe you even find your next read. For the main, I'm Ani Oppression. Finally, if you're looking for something to do tonight, how about joining some Matia students for a virtual concert? Matia Valley's very own Peyton Nowen has his own theater company with other performers at Matia and beyond. Here's an inside look at Four Seasons Performing Arts' upcoming event, Young and Unique. Four Seasons Performing Arts is a not-for-profit theater company that I co-founded back in summer of 2018. Um, it's fully run by Chicagoland teen actors, and our mission is to increase and develop opportunities for young performers in our area. So the Four Seasons Young and Unique concert is a collection of songs written by a group of young original artists, including me. We recorded our own songs and we all got together and collaborated to make this one long music video that showcased our music. The concert will take place tonight, December 4th at 7 p.m. You can find it on our YouTube channel, which is Four Seasons Performing Arts, which is also linked through all of our social medias. See you then. For The Main, this is Sarah Jordan. That's all for this episode. If you want to see more of our content, head over to matiamedia.org and click on The Main. If that isn't enough, follow us on Instagram at Matia Main and make sure to vote for next month's winning seniors using the link below or in our Instagram bio. From all of us here at Broadcast Journalism and Productions, I'm Fiona Delari from The Main. Have a great day.